new, unless you know more than I do, on what Ike and Goldwater talked about. But in a contingency basis, the best name we've come up with, uh, Ball and Rusk and I, is Fulbright, rather better than Stevenson, who ran twice against him and has a little worn image. Furthermore, Bill has the Senate as a pulpit and could use it right away quick. Well, that's, that's good if you get him to do it. I think he'll do it. I'll t I just didn't want to talk to him without checking with you. All right, but uh, I was thinking about television-wise. Yeah. Uh, everybody doesn't read the Senate and doesn't pay no. attention, but they do, and Fulbright's not too good on television. I don't know whether Stevenson would be good or not. Well, Stevenson's very good when he's got the right kind of an audience, but his appeal is in, in trying to separate Eisenhower from uh, Goldwater, which is the real object, the man who yeah. ran against Ike twice isn't the ideal fella. Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, see if Fulbright won't do it then. I will. I thought your memo was good on time. Bob says he feels worse about it than you do. He thinks... It, it really good at us. Well, we're switching positions on a little bit. I used to feel worried about this damned uh, delegation problem, and Bob said never mind, and now he's all worried about it. <laughs> I'm not quite, I knew it was going to be trouble sooner or later. What have we done to reiterate uh, position, Ken? Did you all bring something in here for me to sign after I came in? Uh, I can't recite, Mr. President, exactly how we handled that. I think we brought it to your attention one day at lunch, and you said you wanted to reaffirm the existing delegations. We had a big blue and silver document, which I think I showed to you at that time. But uh, I, let me check the record on that. I think now, what do we do? We just say to Lemnitz, sir, that if you can't reach me immediately, no, if you're under attack. Under major attack is the principal thing. It has to be a major, confirmed, clear attack. In the Lemnitz case, he has to be able to reach you. Some of the others don't have that requirement. I mean, the NORAD people uh, have an air defense problem of protecting the safety of the United States. And and uh, some of the fleet commanders have a relatively clear... Do you want to look at these documents? No, I don't think so, I but give me a summary. Let me I, see will. What I, say. I will. Uh, I hear you were terrific with the organizations this afternoon. Brom Smith was over there and said it was a first-rate performance. And uh, I, I think our only hazard is whether Ike will say this time thing. It doesn't matter if time says it. If Eisenhower says that we're deceiving the American people, then we're in some trouble. But he hasn't said it yet, and we can't decide it until we see what happens. Well, now, how does what Goldwater suggests differ from what we've done? Or what he's real? I think the fundamental, there are two things to be said, Mr. President. On the specific issue of delegation, Goldwater sounds as if he were leaving it to the field commander's judgment, and we've got some quotes that prove that, for him to decide when he needs to use them. Now, we haven't done anything of that sort. The second and more fundamental point is that delegation is not really the issue. All of these delegations are within limits and under conditions. If there ever is such a thing, it's as the president decides. And therefore, the gut question before the country is, what kind of a man as president is going to make all these decisions? No matter how much you delegate, it's a presidential decision. So we ought to keep the argument off delegation and put it where Hubert keeps putting it, Whose finger do you want on this responsibility? Okay. Um.